the transition to electric mobility is much more than just a technological revolution. It's not only about replacing an internal combustion engine with an electric motor and battery. In fact, it will have a profound impact on the society we live in and the way people perceive mobility. In this lecture, I want to highlight some of the social challenges that come with the introduction of electric vehicles. I already introduced you to the concept of public values and public interests, as government has a crucial role in safeguarding public values and protecting public interests. At the highest level in Williamson's institutional framework, important values are located, such as human dignity and the equality of people. In democratic constitutional states, such values are enshrined in the rule of law, which defines the rights and benefits citizens are entitled to, but also the obligations of citizens to society and one another. These values trickle down to lower values in the institutional framework where they are made operational in a more specific context. For example, access to electricity and clean drinking water is essential for all members of society. These services reflect basic needs. They are prerequisites for our health and well-being and for economic productivity. That is why these essential services play an important role in, for instance, the Sustainable Development Goals as defined by the United Nations. In most developed societies, these services are supplied through infrastructure networks, which are legally bound to criteria of universal access, availability and affordability of service, and to criteria of social and environmental acceptability. Governments may choose to organize the supply of these essential services as a public monopoly, but they can also alternatively choose to involve competitive market forces, as well-designed markets tend to produce economically efficient outcomes, which is obviously relevant to ensure the affordability of service. Either way, the basic values to be safeguarded remain the same. If governments choose to leave certain basic services to the market, they have to implement effective regulatory authority in order to protect other criteria than just affordability of service. Like electricity and drinking water supply, mobility is essential for everyone and every business. Businesses depend on transport of people and goods and individual citizens must be able to move around in order to participate in society and the economy. Participation in society requires being connected. Now, that does not mean that everybody is entitled to ownership of a car. It does mean, however, that government provides the road network needed to move around in your city and between cities and regions and across national borders, and that it provides means of affordable public transport for those who cannot afford or choose not to have a car of their own. In densely populated city areas, providing affordable public transport is a lot easier than in sparsely populated rural, rural areas. As a result, Public transport services in rural areas are generally of a lower quality, certainly in terms of frequency. Now, even if the bus that serves a rural area is all electric, people will not be happy if the frequency of service is low or if travel times are much, much longer than with a private car. This situation may be drastically changed in the future of electric mobility and autonomous vehicles. According to a study by the international bank conglomerate UBS, conducted in 2017, fleets of self-driving electric taxis will bring unprecedented, unprecedented mobility at far lower costs than with traditional taxis and other means of public transport, and also at far lower costs than with a private car. The UBS researchers estimate that autonomous taxis or robo-taxis could make the mobility costs for passengers of taxis and other public transport in the US go down with as much as 80%. 
in comparison with the costs of driving a private car, using robo-taxis instead would be possible for approximately half as much. In other words, the mobility system as we know it may be disrupted. Now, just try to imagine what this means. Mobility services would become far more accessible and affordable for the rural population. They would become available for those who are too young or too old or otherwise unable to drive, and they would come within easier reach of lower income groups. The pressure on space for parking in urban areas would largely evaporate, so that more space can be made available for pedestrians, for recreation, for nature and social activities. Air quality in urban areas will improve, and with less cars needed to satisfy our collective mobility needs, the global pressure on scarce material resources will be reduced. It all sounds too good to be true, and indeed we are not there yet. And the question is how governments should deal with this unfolding technological revolution. How can they ensure that it will indeed benefit society as a whole? And what aspects then need specific attention? Two aspects stand out here. The aspects of cybersecurity and privacy. While autonomous taxis offer great potential to reduce the number of road accidents, self-driving cars have been involved in accidents. Due to their dependency on digital communications and navigation infrastructure, they are vulnerable to cyber attacks, hacking, data manipulation, etc. Cybersecurity risks are equally relevant for non-autonomous electric vehicles, as electric vehicles can to a large extent be considered computers on wheels. Cybersecurity breaches obviously pose great risks for road safety and they bring privacy risks. For example, the data exchange that comes with the charging of electric vehicles, whether at public charging stations or at home, invades the user's privacy and must therefore be subject to strict obligations of personal data protection. The intensity of data exchange and therewith the risk of potential privacy breaches increases if the charging process is subject to demand response schemes that provide flexibility to the electric power system. In order to benefit from low electricity tariffs during off-peak times and avoid high tariffs during peak loads, the car user has to indicate personal preferences for when the car must be ready for use. As such data are a strong indicator for personal routines, the electric vehicle owner must be able to trust the flexibility provider, that is the party that intermediates between him and the power system, to protect his private data. And these aspects of privacy and cybersecurity will only become more important as global companies such as Uber and Google sit on the data that we generate with our mobility patterns. The question that has not been adequately addressed yet by most governments around the world is the one of data ownership. Principally, one may argue that the data belongs to the people who generate the data, meaning that the data I generate should be owned by me and not be for anyone else's use without my explicit permission. The question of data ownership is becoming more urgent as we speak, as we are being enveloped by the Internet of Things with smart meters and smart devices everywhere in smart cities. At this stage of the mobility revolution, governments are still acting within the dominant paradigm of private car ownership and they are still struggling to change the preferred choice of car towards electric vehicles. They must therefore see to it that the support infrastructure for road mobility is timely modified, because only with a fine-meshed infrastructure for public charging will potential electric vehicle owners lose their range anxiety. And as electric vehicles come either as all-electric or as fuel cell vehicles, Public charging infrastructure needs to cater for 
both electricity and hydrogen. New rules and regulations are needed to safeguard road safety and to protect our data. And at the same time, governments are designing and implementing stimulation schemes to encourage car owners to buy an electric vehicle. Now, in designing stimulation schemes for electric vehicles, governments have to be aware of potentially adverse social consequences, such as distributional effects. What do I mean? Let me shortly explain. Most financial incentive schemes for electric vehicles involve the transfer of taxpayers' money to a specific group of early adopters. Both for private users and firms running a company car fleet, the decision to be an early adopter is a combination of immature status and affordability. In practice, Early private adopters are mostly found in the highly educated, relatively high income segment of the population. Depending on the duration and scale of income transfer to this privileged group, resistance may develop in the rest of the population. So it's therefore crucial to design an incentive scheme in such a way that it is fair, that it is clearly limited in time and in the extent of income transfer. Now, limited in time does not necessarily imply short duration, as innovative technologies that are in the interest of society as a whole may take many years to be embraced. So the duration of the financial incentive scheme should be aligned with the time needed to increase the efficiency of the new technology through upscaling and incremental improvements. And it should be aligned with the time needed to reduce the costs to the extent that the technology is made affordable for the population at large. All in all, the cost of an electric car and the privacy and cybersecurity risks that come with it will be balanced by the user with the private benefits to be gained. These may be immaterial, such as a cleaner conscience for not polluting the air while driving, or they may be material, in terms of cost savings on the purchase costs and the costs of use. Peer pressure is also a factor in the user's decision. The more of your friends and neighbors are driving electric cars and telling you how happy they are with it, the more you will be inclined to shift to an electric vehicle too. Eventually, each user will weigh the various costs and benefits differently in deciding whether or not to buy an electric vehicle.